Hello everyone, it's Jack from Visual Effects Up today. So here's a quick video on how to composite a monster into a low light scene. This was my way of doing it, it's not the right way of doing it, but it's a really good way of getting all the information and getting all the flexibility in post. So um, here I've made a Wendigo and what you can see is it's quite red. So the lighting for the scene is as you've seen on the, at the beginning, it's quite blue. So what I've done is I've made sure that I've ramped up all the subsurface scattering so that it's quite a lot, a lot more than you'd want it to be probably. And just really boosted the albedo to make it red. It's originally like a gray color, but it's resulted in looking a bit more red. If you look at it in direct lighting, it looks more like that. So you can kind of see that I've used subsurface scattering to really crank the red out of this model. So I've tracked the camera and we've ended up with a result that looks like this, red. So let's just jump into After Effects and show you how I composited. <laughs> So we didn't use the beginning of the shot because we only needed it for a split second. So this was the shot tracked. And then the model was sold for this scene. Um, the only thing I would note is that I wanted to go for a close up, but I didn't get the plate for it. So I've just punched in, but the original shot was a lot wider. So just go back to that. So if we just drop in the model, rendered straight out of Octane, it looks gross, looks rubbish. What you will notice is there is a street lamp up here. Um, so all the lighting looks quite accurate. It's just really bright and really red. So we need to fix that. So this is a slightly different tutorial. All the effects and stuff have been added, so you just go go through each one that was added and show you where we got to the final look. So if we just double click in this comp, it was separated so that the motion blur added it could be applied on top of all the effects. That's why it's in a pre-comp, nothing special. So first things first, we put on curves, which was the massive massive step to getting it looking a lot closer. We did apply all these effects first on the with the back plate so we can see what's going on but for this example I will just copy it over. So we just applied curves which was generally pull down some of the shadows so that we hide some of this and then red wanted it all out um, green didn't really affect and blue we just pushed a bit in the shadows because in these areas you can see a bit of blue in the shadows and that um, gives you more of a night look as well so blue is a colour that stands out at night and everything generally looks more desaturated so um, we just plonk that on and then we got something that looked like that which was pretty cool at the box it looks decent but there's still a few things to fix so it doesn't blend in with the footage that was captured so what we did next was we added a tritone and we picked areas from the scene for the highlights mid tones and shadows that would help blend in this wendigo to the scene more and then just put a slight blend so boop already looking massively better And then we added a hue and saturation just to slightly change the hue because some of this red was looking purple, which was a bit odd, but was getting the right kind of tone. And then we pulled some of the saturation down. So then we end up with an image that looks like that, a lot more believable. This is a little trick that I've not seen many people do, but um, I love this. Fake subsurface scattering. It's good if you're really struggling on render times, but also to get some of that scattering back that you've ended up grading down. Um, duplicate the layer um, we'll just amplify this back to 100 so we can see what's going on 
and then we use roughen edges and we change it to these settings so we've got photocopy and we've just changed the border to 9 you can change some of the other stuff to just get a certain look that you're after and then we can create this like red border around the character which almost looks like a fake subsurface scattering not seen anybody else use this it might be might be used but um i've never seen anybody do it um so we just can add that back to our model so obviously it's really severe hence why we knocked it down to 15 percent so um we can keep some of that red around the edges and just to show you kind of what's happening you can really amplify it if you really wanted to to bring some of it back but we just wanted it to be quite subtle probably looks quite nice there if it was subtle and then we just knocked it back to 15% as you can see it just adds that slight touch of realism back in because we've graded it down that much could probably go a bit braver it was 15 on the final video no that's not um, and once we've done all that and it looks more realistic um, something that just obviously stands out from punching in that much on the footage and the rest of the film is quite depth of fieldy and it's dark so what we did was on the back plate we just add a blur mask so we created this gradient here which was just a ramp on a white solid and and then we just applied a lens blur to the actual back plate with reference to that blur mask. It was more of a, that blur mask was really designed for when we could see the floor. So it's just to keep this little bit in focus, but it doesn't really matter now. So it just means that any of this might, this might stay in a little bit. So just apply that. And we just made it 16, made sure it was octagons, and the gain was 100. And then when we took our Wendigo back in, it looks great. Yeah, so that was our Wendigo um, walking towards. When we put that blur on, magically makes everything look a lot more filmy. And then the only other step that we did was we added pixel motion blur on the comp of the guy. So that it really blends and hides some of the imperfections of the model, I guess. So just a quick recap, like we rendered it purposely red we wanted the full control of how much red and subsurface scattering we wanted to punch through we use curves to grade it down crunch it to closer to the colors that we wanted and still have more flexibility to keep on playing until we was totally happy with it um, then we added our tritone to match some of the shadows the midtones and the highlights and you can just literally just dip and pick colors from the background we had the saturation just to match the colours, just a slight tweak, and pulled some of the saturation down. And then we did our little subsurface scattering trick for the using the rough and edges photocopy mode and just brought some of that back, blended them together, and then we've got that lovely fake subsurface look that we've got full control over. So this is by no means the right way of doing things, but these are a few little tricks to compositing a, a, a creature into a, a low light scene, which is probably one of the biggest challenges I've ever had. So hopefully these tricks were useful and I will catch you on the next one.